Today I'd like to take you to a place that I should have visited much earlier. It's a fascinating avenue in Berlin, formerly called the Stalin Allee. Hi and welcome to another East Germany Investigated video. It took me years and many Berlin visits before I finally took the time to visit this place, the former Stalin Allee, nowadays the Karl Marx Allee and Frankfurter Allee. In this video I will give you the most important background of this avenue, I will explain why it is so special and what is left of it that you still can visit today. At the end of the Second World War, half a million homes had been destroyed in Berlin and an additional 100,000 were heavily damaged. Immediately after the war, in 1945, reconstruction work started. New houses started being built and renovation work started. Debris was collected and transported away by means of a narrow gauge railway. But resources were scarce. Material that was still usable was put aside, such as bricks where cement was knocked off. In December 1949, the Große Frankfurter Straße and the Frankfurter Allee were renamed in Stalin Allee in honor of Joseph Stalin's 70th birthday, which in fact was his 71st birthday by the way. The around two and a half kilometers long avenue starting at the Alexanderplatz going eastbound had to represent the grandeur of the German Democratic Republic. It would take 20 years to complete the project. Also here, many people were working as volunteers to help rebuilding the country. The so-called Freiwillige Aufbauhelfer und Helferinnen. After a contribution of 300 hours of their spare time, they get a lottery ticket for the Aufbau Lotterie, with a 33% chance to get assigned one of the new apartments in the Stalin Allee. To many, winning this lottery feels like winning a real lottery. Living conditions in the new houses are of course much better than what was usual at that time. The apartments may not be the most modern houses available at that time, but they are bright, have running hot and cold water and a district heating system. The avenue was built to show how well housing in the new socialist countries looks. One of the main architects of the construction of the Stalin Allee was Hermann Henselmann. He designed a number of buildings that determined the look of the Stalin Allee. The two towers at the Frankfurter Tor, for example, and the so-called building Block A at the Strausberger Platz. This Russian style of architecture is called Socialist Classicism, or Stalinist Empire style. At the end of the 50s, they started adding a lot of Plattenbau, large panel system building, which was cheaper and also quicker to build. Feel free to check out the video about Plattenbau on this channel. The Stalin Allee, which was called the first socialist street of Berlin, became well known and an attractive place to go to. There were shops offering a wide variety of products, far above of what was common in the GDR those days. The Cosmos Cinema was the largest and most modern cinema in the GDR. Nowadays it's an event location. Café Moscow was a specialty restaurant where you could get the best international food. You may recognize the Karl Marx Buchhandlung that opened in 1953. It is shown in the movie Das Leben der Anderen. Today it's not a bookshop anymore, but still a place for literature events. In 1951 an almost 5 meters high bronze statue of Stalin was unveiled. In March 1953, after Stalin's death, thousands of people participated in the funeral march through the Stalin Allee. In June of that same year, the Stalin Allee is also the place where workers that were building the houses started their strike, demanding the government to resign, which resulted in the German uprising. As part of the de-Stalinization, in November 1961, the Stalin Allee is renamed. Between Alexanderplatz and Frankfurter Tor, it's called Karl Marx Allee, and the eastern part gets back its original name Frankfurter Allee. The old street signs are removed, as well as the Stalin statue.
In 1990, the year of German reunification, the Treuhand, the organization that had to sell all East German state-owned companies, becomes the owner of the buildings at the Karl Marx Allee and Frankfurter Allee. What followed was a period of decay, vacancy and disagreements and disputes between the tenants and the new owners. The privatization had led to higher rents but not necessarily better maintenance. In many cases the new owners wanted to kick out the old tenants. The rooftop terraces, which used to be common areas, were now sold together with the top floor apartments as penthouses and therefore suddenly became no-go areas for the other residents. There was a lot of protest by the original tenants, who joined forces. Some of the original tenants were able to buy their own apartment to avoid the methods of harassments and threats that were applied regularly by the new owners. Or they just left, but finding another place to live in Berlin is not easy, especially since a couple of years. Since around 2010, the housing shortage in Berlin has developed into a serious issue. With a shortage of more than 100,000 housings, Berlin is on top of the list in Germany, also when it comes to the rents, which as well have risen considerably since the beginning of 2022. But despite all of this, many tenants want to stay and many others would love to live in the former Stalin Allee, which confirms that this street is very popular. The people that live on the Karl Marx Allee are an interesting combination of young and old, German and non-German, families, couples and single persons, artists and office workers. Until a few years ago, it was not hard to find people that belonged to the ones living in their apartments since the beginning in the 1950s. Because the apartment blocks have an elevator and shops and public means of transport are nearby, the Karl Marx Allee and Frankfurter Allee are attractive to older people. With the gentrification taking years, which caused a lot of unrest, in 2019 the state of Berlin intervened. It started buying back apartment blocks to get back in control. Around 670 flats were bought back. The public opinions varied from thinking of it as a success to seeing it as a waste of money, because with the same amount twice as much new apartments could have been built elsewhere in the city. How it at the end will all blend will of course depend on other factors as well, most importantly the mindset of the residents. One location I'd absolutely recommend to see when visiting the former Stalin Allee is Café Zibille, which already existed under the same name in the GDR era. This place is not only a café, but it also contains a permanent exhibition which tells the history of the Stalin Allee. More information can also be found on the information panels in the street. I was positively surprised discovering this part of Berlin, even though the weather was not on my side, which on the other hand is a motivation for me to certainly come back another time. That's it for today, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.